These are my old soccer shoes. And this is another 500 of them. We donate the shoes to children in Uganda, Africa. And on top of that, we want to take the three most talented players to play in Europe for two weeks. Here it all began. I was struggling to keep focused on work and procrastinating. So I have decided to work in an office in order to have my own creative space. I started renovations to have a nice workplace where I could create and focus. Yes, Philip? Hi Philip, it's Libor here. Uh, listen, we are going to Uganda next week and our videographer just got some problems, so he is not able to come. So I'm just wondering if you would be interested in joining us. It's really fast action, but in four days I'm going to shoot a documentary to Uganda. Whew! Totally, totally crazy, I still can't believe it. And yeah, I guess, let's go! This is Libor Wall. He founded a soccer academy in Vancouver that has since expanded to USA, Egypt, Czech Republic and Uganda. He is a former professional football player turned coach and mostly entrepreneur. His vision is to use football to help children in Uganda and give them a chance for a better life one day. However, due to the lack of equipment, he has been providing support by donating new equipment. To make those kids happy, we need to take the shoes to the airport, transport them to Uganda, give them to the children, provide trainings and finally bring three boys back with us to Europe. Uganda Adventure starts now. We just arrived in Vienna airport. Uh, we are flying to Uganda, which wants to be in Qatar, and we are bringing around 600 kids with us. So there it is, oh yeah, I'm flying to Uganda to film a documentary with three crazy dudes and 500 shoes. Crazy. But Libor has been flying there since 2013, so nothing can go wrong. Yeah, no problem at all, right? We are here in Qatar, but without Libor. There was a problem with the shoes because they wanted to charge extra 3,500 euros for all the bags. So we took only a few bags with us, which were free of charge, and Libor will fly uh, to us in a few days. And now it's like half past one in the morning, and we have like eight hours of layover here. So yeah, a lot of fun. And this is Paolo, also a really cool guy who I met first time at the airport. Hello, my name is Dan Bublak. This is Dan. We met at the airport for the first time, but he is an awesome guy and a big traveler with almost 60 countries. Dan and Paolo are basically best friends and they go on a lot of adventures together. So here we are, three random guys for the first time alone in Uganda's main city, Kampala. Well, not that alone. This is coach Peter. Wolf soccer coach from Uganda and luckily he picked us up and showed us everything we needed. Right from the start we have noticed a huge difference in behaviors, culture, people, road conditions but also in nature. Everything was just different and we were staring the whole way from our windows like three years old. So we have arrived to our apartment. Look at it, it's pretty nice. Finally we are here, we are going to take some rest and some dinner. Well this is our view, pretty awesome. I'm first time in Africa, in Uganda, and this is crazy. And by the way, look at that. It seems that here I'm a millionaire. <laughs> first day in Uganda and we got to a private wedding. It was pretty crazy. It was just behind the corner here and uh, there was everything free. They invited us and now I'm going to a football match. We arrived to Uganda on Saturday and now we know that Libor should arrive on Monday evening, hopefully, because he still doesn't have his visa and ideally the other airline will let him board with all of those bags. So will Libor even arrive to Uganda? No one knows now. Now when I'm finishing the video, I have realized how crazy it was. Like, imagine me, a white guy, uh, what is not really typical in Uganda. Some people like never even saw someone like me. And I'm in a small village 
no one knows where, two hours from the main city with totally random people from Uganda. Just saying. <laughs> and just by the way, they call people with white skin Muzungu. Muzungu? <laughs> when final matches started, there were hundreds of people and only one Muzungu, me. Kids were going crazy, running around me and screaming, Muzungu, Muzungu. Everyone wanted to talk to me and was curious what I am doing here with the big camera. What a first experience with Uganda. We have decided to explore the city on our own on Monday morning. We are all very experienced travelers, so we know what to do. Little did we know how wrong we were. 45? Yeah, let's make 45. Maybe next time you can come back and visit from everyone saying you. So you can make 45. So we got nice fish, fresh tilapia uh, from the local market. As you can see behind me, there is a lake and the fish is straight from the lake. Let's taste it. The fish was really delicious, but one hour passed and problems started to occur. Then had a big stomach ache and urgently started to search for a toilet. Well, good luck in Uganda. He found one and headed straight to the apartment. When we got back to him, the worst happened. He started vomiting every few minutes, could not eat or drink and had a fever. It's tricky to eat street foods in Uganda because the conditions are sometimes really, really gross. And the European stomach is not ready for that. Hopefully, then we'll be okay. But finally, Libor arrived with all the shoes. One step closer to our goal. I'm Czech Santa Claus in Uganda here. I went back to Czech Republic, got visa, brought the shoes for 1200 US. Not easy. Got to the airport at midnight and I was flying at six in the morning. All bags, they were at the storage. So I had to go there to take some stuff out, make each bag 23 kilograms. I promise all the people, even from Canada, that I will deliver. And we did, we did deliver. And also they wanted me to pay for those shoes at the airport. They want to charge me for me bringing donation for kids here. And I, but I did it smart way. I told them I'm not going to give them anything. <laughs> we went to sleep and finally we were all here. We are going to take the Boda Boda scooters. As you can see, even in the main city there is poverty, slums, waste and pollution everywhere. There are no rules, no laws, no order. Roads are usually from dirt or gravel. Poor people live on the streets, in slums, in a big poverty. But they don't even care. They treat rubbish like part of the system and part of the ground. They walk next to it, throw plastic everywhere they can imagine and just act like this is normal. But seeing this as a European, it is totally crazy and my brain just can't take it. In Uganda is a big difference between poor and rich. Rich get richer and poor get poorer. So we have decided to visit homes of Wolf soccer players and show it to you. So now we are outside of Joshua house. We are visiting him. I'm sure he will be surprised and he will be happy to see us. How do we do that? How are you? Good? Good to see you, man. Where are your parents? They are in the village, they're working there? Okay. They, sometimes they come back to visit today. Really? Mm. How often they come here? Three times a year. Three times a year? So you guys stay alone? Oh, wow. oh you guys are responsible, yeah. eh? A 
Okay, uh, where do you guys cook? Cook from outside. From outside? outside? Yeah. So where do you sleep? My sister sleeps here. Then we are in the You guys sleep down. Yeah. So you guys all three here in in one mm -hmm. in one room. Wow. We got a computer here mm -hmm. for studying. So you basically have a whole house here. You have a kitchen here, <laughs> kitchen. You have a room here, bedroom. Nice. Same as the sitting room. Oh, it's everything. Everything. No TV. <laughs> no TV for now. For now. Mm. But one day. One day. You're gonna get the TV one day. Yeah. And he's gonna make money and buy a TV. Yes. And then he's gonna watch you play in Europe. Mm. Yeah. One day. One day. Mikey, how are you? All good? All good? Yeah? Yes. Hello, how are you? I'm very glad to see you. Good to see you, thank you for having us. Hello, hello, hello. Brought you some food. You are welcome. You are welcome, welcome, welcome. We were supposed you know, to go to Europe, we, we know that. We to Europe, so they are working we, hard. We prepared the passport. We prepared for the, the, the papers for the visa and still waiting. But you want to go to Europe, right? Yeah. We want to take them to Europe. We organize everything. We got paper. We got uh, passports. But we're waiting for the visa. By the name I'm called Mukag Mike. I'm from Uganda. I want to be uh, the best player through through Involves Academy. So tell me, where do you sleep? Yeah, we are sleep. You sleep there? Yeah. yeah. Here? We are sleeping in three. Well, and then the rest of your 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 siblings? Other are sleeping here. Here? Who sleeps here? Mommy? Yeah. In the end, it doesn't even matter for them where they live or what they eat. They all love football. They play it every single day. Their lives consist mostly of school and football, not much more. They play barefoot or with broken shoes, on the streets, on dusty fields, at home, everywhere. But because of the government and the poverty, they don't have many opportunities. Even though there could be hundreds of talented kids who can be the next Messi or Ronaldo, they just don't get the chance. But at least in one place, the kids are supported and have better conditions. This is my school, Chibuli HS. This is where I started from. I'm a senior one. We are going with coach. See our school, how it's beautiful. Everything is good. Food is good? Yeah. So we are visiting him. This is his dormitory where he sleeps. This is the school where he studied. And we are so happy to be here. They have two, they have they have two soccer there. fields here. You guys practice how many times? Every day? Every day practice? Give me. So you stay here for one month? Nah, no, three months. Three months? Then you go home for the holidays. And then you come back. And finally, then it's better now. But it was two days of hell for him. Really be careful what you eat here. Guys, Paul and Dan are leaving today for an adventure. They are going to Elgon National Park to hike to Wagagai Mountain, one of the highest mountains here in Uganda. But they don't know anything, basically. They will go there and figure it out during the way. They also don't know English that well. So hopefully they will come back on Saturday or Sunday. 
we'll see. Unfortunately, things didn't go as planned. Paulo forgot passport and they ended up waiting in the bus for two hours without it moving. To make matters worse, it started pouring rain and they struggled due to their limited English and lack of local guides. This was a strong no. They decided to walk back to the apartment. But even just walking on the streets is an unspeakable experience in Uganda. As you remember, we not only brought 500 shoes, we have one more goal. Now I'm on my way to Czech Embassy to deal with the uh, uh, visa for the boys because we are planning to bring some, some players to Europe and we are struggling to get a visa, so I'm gonna go to see a uh, Czech consul. Okay, we just finished our appointment at French Embassy here in Kampala. That was the last uh, step to get a visa for those champions to bring them to Europe. But we have failed. The whole way to Uganda with all the struggles and we didn't get the visas. There is a big corruption and everything takes so much time. The government doesn't want people to leave the country, especially poor kids. It is unfortunate, but that is the reality. Therefore, we were unable to fulfill the dreams of the young boys. When the kids are out there playing, you can clearly see the joy and excitement in their eyes. The spark when they touch the ball, the insane skills. So at least we gave them the shoes. much more shoes than kids in World Soccer Academy. So we have started to spread happiness all around Kampala. Yo, thank you our support fans. And even my shoes were donated to Joshua's school. This should teach you a lesson. Always value what you have rather than complain about what you don't. It can always be worse. Those kids appreciate even the smallest things like warm food, clean water or new clothes. And you should too. This was not a story about me or us giving away shoes in Uganda, but a story about you. How you can change someone's world with just one pair of old shoes. And here, also my world changed.